Okay, uh, based on the uh, existing or the presentations I've seen so far, uh, now for something completely uh, different. Um, we're not a funding agency as much as we are a, an organization that helps uh, primarily uh, small and medium-sized uh, enterprises and or our industry uh, partners access funds and we provide value-added um, assistance to help them develop their product or to be engaged in applied research. And uh, we are, uh, Hugh Seaton made a presentation earlier and I'm gonna talk about our uh, NSERG CCI and when I think about all the connections um, that uh, I've seen here this afternoon and uh, one of the things in my former life was I helped the bison industry get, get up and going. So uh, anyhow, here we go. So uh, Brian asked me to uh, address uh, a number of questions. You'll see those uh, topics in black. I'm gonna do it under four headings that fit with the way our organization is structured. And um, I, I'm a bit of a, a historian in that I like to tell the story about how we got here because that helps explain what we do and why we do it and, and how we're doing it. Okay, so those are the headings I'm gonna follow. Some of this I'll go through fairly quickly because I know it's being recorded and you'll have access to it uh, to re review later. So why did we, uh, or how did this all kind of start for us? And it was that um, we've been at it for about 10 years. And it started because our region had a challenge. And it was that our economy was fixated on the um, uh, commodities. Um, we had an opportunity that we needed to address. We had regional innovators who had new ideas folks like you with new products that need to be developed. We had a problem in that there was no services available. Uh, for those of you who know the Grand Prairie, uh, Fairview, uh, Manning area, it's a long way from there to here. And uh, we wanted to address that. And then the solution was in-region services. And our biggest problem was we were fixated here on the, on the resource economy and uh, we're out of balance with the new economy and we wanted to address that. That's not a bad thing, but it's just that um, for those of you that are familiar with the resource curse, we have that playing out in our um, regional economy. So we wanted to address that component of it. As I mentioned, we have uh, a very highly uh, innovative region, lots of inventors. Um, we have more patents per capita than, uh, um, Alberta has more patents per capita than any other region in, in Canada. And so we wanted to take advantage of those, uh, and the peace country is actually quite innovative. We want to take advantage of that. So as I said, no services within the region. We started the Innovation Network uh, back in 2002, and that became the current regional solution, which is the Center for Research and Innovation. So I'm gonna talk about two things. The center, our culture of uh, uh, encouraging innovation, the applied research, and the innovation piece. So we have a regional partnership our, with our Regional Economic Development Alliance. Uh, our vision is to a center of a network of regional researchers and innovators that are there for the purpose of helping uh, small and medium-sized enterprises and inventors get new products into the marketplace. Uh, we use a mixed staffing model. Uh, our operating funds uh, come from Alberta Innovates Technology Futures. We also, uh, if you remember that slide that Steve uh, put up uh, on the green side, we are that lime green color. We are one of those service providers. So we get our, some of our funding from Technology Futures. We also get uh, a big chunk of our funding from NSERC. We were just recently successful in uh, round five uh, CCI, and I'll talk about that in a minute. And uh, we also get project funds from companies or organizations like uh, IRAP and uh, PRITA. And why that's important is that those agencies have a small amounts of money that are available to clients, uh, IRAP more so than PRITA, and we can help our clients access those funds by providing um, assistance in developing their, their proposals. I mentioned already that we are regional entrepreneurs and innovators. Uh, in 2005, 40% of the patent requests uh, in Alberta came out of the peace country. We have 5% of the population. Um, and we do things like uh, innovation awards to help uh, promote this culture of innovation. And um, we actually started, a, uh, started engaging in a really uh, interesting program, Destination Imagination. Has anybody heard of that? This organization has been around for over 30 year, years in the U.S. And it is a, um, uh, this year was the first year that, it got in, that uh, schools in Alberta became engaged with it. Uh, Calgary and Grand Prairie were the first two uh, areas to become engaged. And it is an, um, think like an inventor, think innovation 
and it's introduced to uh, school kids. We had uh, actually preschool kids all the way up to uh, high school engage in this uh, this year. So it's a, a very good program, and I really encourage you, if you're interested in innovation, to, uh, to seek it out. Um, okay, innovation services. So if you're a small and medium-sized enterprise, or you're an, an inventor and you're interested in uh, getting something into the marketplace, you can come to us and we provide these services. Intellectual property assessment and management. We have an intellectual property lawyer who comes to our region um, every four weeks. And uh, I'll, I'll, I'll talk a little bit more of that in a moment. Uh, we help with prototype development. We have an idea assessment and management uh, component to our activity. Um, we just added a new uh, component to it and it comes to uh, a lot of times companies have a really good idea, they need access to money, but they're not ready for that. Because one of the things that the investor says is, what's your management structure? What's your growth ability? Great product, but that's number three in my list as an angel investor. And so we've, we, we used to think that product development was everything. What we learned from uh, the, the, one of the premier angel investor developers from the US, that that's number three on the list. And so growth, ability to grow, and uh, ready, readiness. And so we're putting a lot of attention to that here uh, lining up for the fall. Uh, we have a very excellent uh, mentoring and coaching program where we engage uh, with a client in, in, in numerous ways. And so if, if you're one of our clients, uh, sometimes it's the 10 minute phone call at 11 o'clock at night uh, after a very busy day saying, how do I solve my next problem? Sometimes it's uh, once a month in the office for an hour of mentoring and uh, talking about uh, development. Um, we offer workshops. Uh, we have a session like this every year um, that we call our inventors workshop and our innovators workshop. And we're doing some market analysis work and we try to have a regional presence uh, Grand Prairie Regional College uh, uh, campus. We have a uh, Center 2000 uh, located, co-located with the Chamber 2000. That's our innovation services. We have a, um, a satellite in uh, Peace River that's underserved, and our Fairview College campus. And so, um, that's that's where our main activity comes. We use a really simple model in terms of new product development, plain language, idea. Will it work? Is it feasible? Is it viable? and then what form of innovation or implementation you take from there. So, and that's worked for us uh, very well. We refer to ourselves as a one-stop shop for SMEs. <coughs> innovation services side, uh, we're actually quite proud of the uh, engagement with our regional inventors and um, 205 clients have been served over the first four years that we've been around. And um, we've started counting uh, people a little bit differently. But uh, essentially, uh, almost 200 people have met with the intellectual property lawyer. We've had over 600 people engaged in workshops uh, like this. And uh, we're, uh, we're quite uh, pleased with uh, the engagement. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about client successes. Um, Sean just gave you some uh, ideas of uh, how they work with people and, and how the money flows there. Um, all of these clients that we've worked with took advantage of a program that Alberta Innovates Technology Futures uh, has, has made available. As I missed, I'm sorry, I missed this morning's uh, session. Was uh, the Innovation Voucher Program talked about this morning? No. Um, it's my understanding that the uh, Innovation Voucher Program, uh, we were uh, quite successful in rounds uh, one and two, and we helped companies like this engage in their, their projects. Uh, David's Forsath was a company from the... Um, um, far in the northwest uh, part of the Clear Hills in our uh, Peace Country area. And he had a uh, heat trace unit that uh, he's developed for the oil and gas company. Randy Galbraith, this is his equipment here. Um, he is uh, essentially changing the way that uh, pipe is laid in the ground and uh, in forestry and in agriculture applications. And this is an ag and forestry uh, uh, seminar and you probably are well aware of the horror stories of pipelines going across farmland, going across the forest land, and the ongoing problems that's created. Randy's technique virtually eliminates that. We've seen slides of it, we've seen testimonials of it, where you lay that pipe across the land, you come back a year later, and the only reason that you know that there's pipe in the ground is because there's a notch in the fence line where the, the hedgerow or the bush has been cut, and, and or there's a flag there. It's that dramatic. Um, previous uh, life, I did some... Uh, um, reconciliation work for one of the local elk farmers with uh, when the Alliance pipeline went through 
and they had a real wreck. And if they had have used Randy's techniques, it would have been a non-issue. A non um, 45 Innovations, uh, John, this is the company I was talking with you about. Uh, I'm going to talk to them about you and maybe make a connect on your, your abilities um, with their product. Uh, Pete Taves is a, uh, a local manufacturer, and we help him by introducing new technology. Uh, Phil and Adam Korf, uh, they've got a new slice saw. Uh, it sits on the end of the, uh, uh, essentially a high hole feller buncher, uh, but it's a saw. And the neat thing about it is there's no escape of oil and so it's an uh, environmentally friendly uh, uh, new, new development. Uh, here's a quick example of uh, five companies that we worked with, and we've uh, we essentially worked as a third-party service provider. Uh, here's round two, and in this round we had more vouchers per capita than any other region of the province, and we were quite proud of that. And again, I'm just going to do that very quickly. You'll have access to it later. And Brian, uh, this is round three, four, and five. With the changes in the rules of the program, it hasn't been to the advantage of our clients. And we've advocated for a change, and I'm waiting for the, the, the announcement. And I think it's going to happen here next week or in, in 10 days, or we hear it's, it's coming soon. So as a, as a uh, SME, keep that in mind and contact, whether it's ACAMP or whether it's us or organizations like us, uh, Hugh, uh, Nate uh, has a, a, a more robust service that we have located here in Edmonton. But uh, as the colleges, uh, we share information and tell people um, who else is, uh, is about. Um, I'm going to go very quickly through that. Our institutional research plan is to collaborate uh, with people. Um, I've mentioned uh, the NSERC and I'm going to just kind of skip through because I'm running out of time. But forestry uh, show, so we have a white spruce uh, seedling uh, hardening um, technique uh, project that we do with all the softwood forest companies in the region. We have an effluent to fiber project, which is taking the uh, effluent from uh, one of the municipalities' lagoons and putting it as an irrigant on high, um, on hybrid, fast-growing hybrid poplar with our hardwood lumber company. We have a winter planting uh, project. Uh, we can now we've demonstrated that you can plant black spruce in winter conditions. And just a, a very uh, simple uh, experiment with over 90% uh, survivability. And uh, uh, the funder on this one is, is ecstatic with the results, and they're going to move that uh, uh, into practice. Uh, I'm going to skip over this part of it. Here's our industry partners. Here's some of the SMEs that we're working with. And do I have time for this yes, one, Brian? Yes, yes. OK. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take a moment to read this quote, because um, Every once in a while, you, when you work with people and you wonder whether or not you're doing any good. And this is a neighbor of mine that uh, we both lived in Fairview and I moved away for a while. And when I came back to Grand Prairie, I found Randy had moved to Grand Prairie and here we were. I was at the college. He's a successful SME. And here's his story. So I asked him one day, how's it going? How, how have we been able to help you? And this is what he said. Everyone talks about innovation. But what I didn't think people understand is the process involved in innovation. To me, you think, to me, you have to think about three other words that are linked and cannot be separated from the word innovation, and, that, and they are change, fear, and trust. You cannot have innovation without the recognition that change is needed. But for most people, it's the fear that will break the link in the chain that's needed to move forward. Until a few years ago, I never considered myself an innovator. So the fear that myself and other, other innovators, I'm sure, must feel as at, at times is a major hurdle to overcome. This fear is a fear of criticism, financial failure, embarrassment in the community, failing your family, colleagues, and a fear of failure itself. So without gaining the feeling of trust and acceptance from somewhere, you cannot overcome the fear. Trust takes time to build. And I believe that the CRI is a place I can trust to discuss freely the ideas and concepts in order to innovate. And I say that because ACAMP is another one of those organizations who does exactly that. BioSolutions is another one of those organizations that's there to help you exactly that way. And uh, I'm going to leave it at that. And I thank you for the opportunity to present about what we do. And just remember, there's 17 of us throughout the province at your local college and technical institute, Nate and Sater included in that, okay?